Hello, I'm John from the Haunt Informer. And I'm Glenn from Fall Ritual. And this is episode 33 of Fall Informer. And today we have a special guest, Todd from Reaper's Revenge. Hello, everyone. I'm Todd Tradition from Reaper's Revenge. How are you? Great. Thank you for being on. Happy to be here. <laughs> awesome. So go ahead, Glenn. First question. All right. We'll get right into it. So uh, what got you into haunts? Well, honestly, uh, dating all the way back to when I was uh, before a teenager, like um, maybe eight, nine, ten years old. My uncle used to do home haunting in his yard. And um, I got turned on to uh, the first Halloween flick uh, back in 78 and, um, you know, and fell in love with Michael Myers and John Carpenter, Jamie Lee Curtis and all that. And, uh, you know, from there, did a couple of haunts when I was a teenager, but was a home hunter for 10 years and 14 years ago decided to make a career out of this thing. So there it is. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) So my first question for you is, I actually saw you at the Transworld Haunt Show with your escape room business, and I wanted to ask you about this. Since you have a business selling escape rooms to the haunt industry, I wanted to know, what do you see the trajectory of escape rooms in the future? What trends do you think are going to happen? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I'm still amazed that uh, I'm doing as uh, as much business with it as uh you know, six years ago, I thought when we started the consulting business, my uncle and I, uh, I thought it was going to be about a year and uh, maybe two. That was that was all I was expecting. Okay. And uh, now six years later, and obviously COVID it was in the middle. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they're going to rebound for the next year or two. And then you're going to see the next generation of the games evolving in all the cities. Like, um, you know, less and less locks. And you're going to see a lot more. Um, position-driven placement, computerized automations, things of that nature. And everybody will continue to elevate their game scenically because, you know, I mean, so many people are setting the bar so high. I mean, my company actually deals with a lot of entry-level. You want to open an escape room business. Here's all the plans to do it. You know, and we we make it affordable, and we've been selling them around the world. Um, so we've been very fortunate, Uncle Dan and I, to have Mind Games Escape Rooms. I think we call it Mind Games Productions, too. We have a few different names. God only knows. <laughs> There's a corporation out there somewhere with the actual official name, but that's top secret information. I cannot tell you that. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> I got issues. I've been building all day in the woods, man. You go nuts out here. I actually had I actually had the most amazing day. I just have to tell you guys. Like literally, I worked for about seven hours. Didn't I mean I stopped for about 15 minutes to be, have a little power aid, you know. I have to have power aid. And um I, I was gonna try to say a good slogan there, so maybe they pick me up as a sponsor, but I kind of <laughs> failed. I failed miserably there. But, um, uh, you know, we took a stop just to have a little Powerade. And, um, I mean, I had a little snack. I didn't even really eat lunch. I was so excited about building today. But 35 days to go until Haunt opens. Every day you get a little bit. I just got back here last night, you know, from the escape room business. And, um, wow, you know, I just wanted to get out here. I'm so so pumped to do stuff. And I just had seven hours of, like, I want to still build. But I want to go to dinner with the guys, too. You know, it's nice to have one of our full-timers. It's his birthday today. And, you know, we, we're we a family here at Reaper's Revenge. So I wanted to make sure we took him out to dinner tonight, you know, even though it's Sunday, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Feels I don't know what day it feels like. <laughs> All right. Next question. <laughs> go ahead, John. I know you got some more. You got more than okay. I do. Sure. Okay. So I want to ask you, since you've been in the industry for a while now, I wanted to know, what do you think is the perfect balance of animatronics and scare actors? Oh, that's an interesting one because, I mean, we've worked uh, very, you know, very, it's a, uh, man, it's tough because we're such an actor-driven haunt. Yes. Um, but I think it's it's all about proper position and uh, uh, getting the opportunity to get that diversion so that it's not just actor after actor after actor. Make them think a little bit, catch them off so that the actors really can get a great scare. Um, I mean, I don't have an equation to figure that out. Okay. As much as I can tell you uh, personally, we were 100, I mean, 185 actors, but I'm sure it always goes up to 190. And then, you know, you have your supervisors that will jump into outfit at any point or are in outfit sometimes and doing training out there. So, I mean, there's 20, you know, 23, 24 supervisors at the same time. So there's over 200 people that could be scaring you at Reapers. Um, I, I think the number this year is going to be like 
um, around 170 is what I'm hearing from okay. Travis. Um, so, so I mean, we've cut about 15 spots. We've put a lot of animatronic stuff in this year. Okay. Um, but, um, I mean, I guess over the entire 65 acres, it's not as much as you think. I mean, I got my way with a few different things I'm very excited about. Um, you know, but from Gatekeeper, um, the first scene you see of the night, all the way up through Alice, um, there's something changing everywhere. I got something huge for Pumpkin Hill this year uh, that I've wanted for five years, and I finally got my way. <laughs> so, but again, I can't tell you what it is. But, uh, you know, the ring scene, I'm doing something really, really cool there. Um, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be fun. Yes, go on and test your fate this fall. <laughs> yes. So I don't know if I answered that uh, question appropriately. I, I think you just really have to look at, you don't ever want to rely too much on animatronics, and you really want the actors to bring it home. But there are times where you can do too much with actors, and you need to break it up to have that anticipation of a scare or it's just you're constantly ramming it down their throat. And, you know, people get, um, you know, they're, they're, they get immune to it a little bit. They're, they're so used to it that there's no anticipation. And, um, you know, somebody told me that years ago, and I never forgot it because it's I think it's great, uh, great advice. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like with thrillers or horror movies. You have to have the timing just right, where you have to have that creepy area where you're like, is that door going to open? And like build that suspense. Maybe that's why I don't like horror flicks because you know, <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, it's it's that took a lot of energy just to think about my timing timing at my haunt. If I'm gonna watch something for fun. I want to watch comedy and laugh. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. But what else you got for me? <laughs> Ask away. I'm an open book. <laughs> well, leading to your question about timing, John. You, I know you have a question about yes. time. Yes, I do actually. Right, next one. So this is the way I've worded it. I think a key factor of the show of Reaper's Revenge, and I think you do an excellent job, A-plus with it, is the timing of the show. And I think you honestly, I think, have perfected it and do it so well. It's absolutely impeccable. And I wanted to know, how have you perfected that over the years? Because honestly, like, it's like so well done. Like, I've been to tons of haunts, and yours is easily one of the best timed ever. Uh, I, I, it's a real simple answer. Um, I got to give Paul uh, Cotran, uh, the original owner of Reapers, uh, the founder. Um, you know, I mean, uh, this was his brainchild. And he, you know, worked so much in the entertainment industry with the carnivals. Um, and, uh, and I mean, really, in carnivals, that's what it all is. It's timing. How much it takes to get into uh, town? How long does it take to set up? How long does it take to have a fair? How long does it take to break down and time is money and get to the next show? Uh, Paul was always about timing is everything and that's how the the haunt was uh built i mean honestly um i didn't look at timing at my other first haunt uh paul met me i think year four we we're both four years old um you know and he came and helped me and brought some reapers to my haunt and you know and he'll, he'll tell you he's like oh i thought it was going to be a joke and when he showed up to my haunt and it was something my uncle and i and a couple other guys did um, you know, I mean, it was a, a big charity haunt. I mean, it was 16,000 square feet. It wasn't a small haunt. Um, but he was surprised when he showed up and he saw instantly, oh, he's got some skills. So there's a, there's a few things Paul did right here at Reapers was one, the timing. He always had that proper from how you uh, load the hayride to when they're getting off the hayride. We know every minute and down in the, the seconds, like 15 seconds from here, Okay, 30 seconds down the road, this is this. I did some new stuff at the ring scene. That timing has to fit in perfect with the markers in the hayride of where our tractor drivers are supposed to be so the show is choreographed. But yeah, Paul Paul led with that. And then he found people like myself or our other full-timers here um, that, um, you know, just kind of, he brought us in and had, uh, you know, had some really talented people around him that, um, you know, I'm, I'm good at a couple things, you know, and, and uh, Jen's great at these things or Amber, who's over there is great at, at other stuff. Uh, and we all balance each other real well. So it's timing and then having the right people that can execute your timing and understand maybe your vision for it. And, you know, and that was always Paul's, uh, you know, thing. And he's still with us, he, you know, although he's kind of stepped back from daily operations and is more a silent partner now. Um, uh, you know, 
he's kind of given me the opportunity to kind of run with this thing, you know, um, me being the youngest one out of all. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Matt Herzog from Penhurst, who owns uh, some of uh, our shares too. He's the youngest. Matt's like nine years younger than me. But Matt's, you know, also kind of a silent partner right now, but it's helped me tremendously this year with marketing and all kinds of good stuff. I could go on forever about all that. I just have a really wonderful, uh, we have a wonderful family here at Reapers, but the five of us that own the haunt, um, it's just, uh, it's a great, it's a great family all together. No, um, one of, one of my friends who went to media night last year for Reapers, he said you were actually investing in like technology, like trying to make the timing better too. Well, yeah, yeah, we're always looking at stuff like that. And uh, I mean, each scene, we're going out tonight to one of the scenes and we're looking at um, all the different programming for that particular scene because um, it's going to be neat how things turn on and off and are based on the timing. So, yes, there is um, there is different technology that's involved. Um, and we've got an amazing tech team here that, um, you know, between Andy, my partner, Mike, um, and Ryan, who today is Ryan's birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, Ryan. I don't know how old he is. How old is he? I don't know. He, I think he's like 10 years younger than me. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But um, so uh, and we got an amazing tech team that just makes sure all that stuff comes together. And, you know, and I go out there and I do programming with Andy and them. And uh, I'm excited tonight. I'm going to see uh, some programming that, that they did the last couple of days while I was up doing the escape rooms. And, uh, you know, and then uh, I'm, I'm really into projection mapping. So I'm pushing them to kind of get me, uh, you know, I've got different things that we're working on to make sure the mapping is happening around here. So that was a little little secret I shared with you. <laughs> but we've done projection mapping to a certain degree, but just not on, I'm trying to go to the next level and I've really been into it. So I'm learning a lot about it. I'm so excited about LumaFest up in Binghamton in a, in a couple of weeks. It's going to be incredible. So. Nice. <laughs> What's your question, Glenn? <laughs> Uh, would you guys ever do an off-season event, like a Christmas, Valentine's, halfway to Halloween type thing? At Reapers, no. Um, and the simple reason is, and we've we have always discussed this, we're just an animal out here that opens for eighteen nights, and then we and we literally after after the the show's done, this place is torn down in a week, and it's closed up. But maybe some stuff happens in the second week. But I mean, <laughs> you know, the doors are locked, the cameras are on, and and we're we're back home, you know, and uh, and and everybody comes up. We have a lot of people that are local that work here, and you know, and they come up and check on stuff, and you know. But I mean, we're literally open for eighteen nights. It takes so much from like when we can get out here in March, end of March or early April. Um, we're out getting the mountain kind of started back up, seeing what damage happened from winter, and then um, you know, after that, it's like. We got to work all year, do our new stuff. We're doing a new final scene next year. I'm excited about that, um, which is a huge build. And we're going to actually start that in November. So, I mean, we'll, we'll stay up here as long as we can. But, and, we, and, we, and we're up here chopping wood. I'm just saying the show itself, the show itself, we start, like, we've already put the whole hayride back up. We're doing final tweaks to the hayride this week with 35 days still to go. And uh, the other the attractions, we've been in all them, too. we got to do a, a work in the carnival the next couple of days is probably where we're going to end up after we uh, finish doing some tweaks on the hayride. But, um, you know, I mean, it, it, there's so much that goes into just those 18 nights. We can't do anything else. Um, and I just don't know if it's lucrative enough. Um, I, I think it's uh, better that we just we have our business and we do it and we do that well. And uh, we pull that off. And I'd rather put more energy into making Reapers a better show versus trying to do something on Halloween, um, you know, uh, Valentine's Day or something like that. I mean, I probably should spend time with my girlfriend on Valentine's Day, <laughs> not try to, not, not try to haunt. Although, although my girlfriend does own a haunt, so maybe I could get away from it, away with it. We'll see. <laughs> uh, well, go on. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what do you think is the game plan for reaper's Revenge when you go to the transport haunt show do you know like what scenes you know exactly are going to get changed or do yeah. you go in like just uh like you don't know what's going to happen no no we already know um you know reapers is like a big chess match or a chess match or uh like you know 
my partner Mike likes to call the model railroad. Um, I mean, we already know what we're doing next year. I mean, we're finishing up all the changes to the 22 season, but we're already planning for the 23 season. I mean, not planning. I mean, we're putting things into place. I mean, our architects are working on, you know, the structure with our engineer and all that. I mean, that's going to be ready to break ground in November. And then we already know what didn't make the list this year because we have creative lists that are given to us by all our supervisors. You know, there's there's one thing, you know, we have a creative list and a wish list. Like, you know, if there's something that we can do to make your job easier, we want to do that right away. But then, okay, what do we want to do? You know, so, uh, last year we changed slaughter into uh, the uh, the temple scene, and you know, I had the dragon and the serpent, and Soul Seeker went from the beginning at Gatekeeper, and Soul Seeker went up there, and we got the new Angel of Death. Um, you know, so uh, I can tell you, I can tell you one thing. I'll give you a sneak sneak peek. Uh, Angel of Death won't be at the beginning of the show this year. Something completely new. That's all I'm gonna say. But it must be bigger, must be better. Or why would we do it? So <laughs> very excited to go to Reapers again. <laughs> All right. Do you have another question, Glenn? Um, this this might be kind of impossible to answer, but uh maybe maybe it's easy. I don't know. Um, out of all the scenes, out of all the stuff, do you have like a favorite scene or one you're most proud of? Yeah. Yeah, it's real easy, real easy to tell you. Pumpkin Hill is, for me, Pumpkin Hill is the epitome of what we do. I love the big stuff. I love the huge pumpkin monsters. I love Halloween. Um, I, that just does it for me. Now, there's some other stuff that's probably way more impressive, but I'm just going with my roots. And I love the sound of Pumpkin Hill. Now, I love the fact that I got my new guy. I got actually two new guys that are going there. So I will tell you this. Um, I do have uh, my original guy, Pump Killer, which was an animatronic that I built um, uh, back when I first started being a hunter. Uh, so almost 14 years ago. I probably I probably built it like second year or something like that. But it was my first attempt at an animatronic. And uh, he's still with me. And uh, he's going to be on Pumpkin Hill this year. And then we got something even bigger and better that uh, that is going to come with him. So... Pump Killa and uh, and and uh, the other guy's called Bad Seed, so we'll yeah. leave it at that. <laughs> thank awesome. you. I'm, I'm so glad thank, you said that. Thank that's you. Thank, hold on. Thank you, Kevin from Gorgalore. <laughs> 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 I just I got to put a shout out into there, and uh, and at this point, I'm obligated by the Hilton Resort to say that the Hilton is the official partner hotel of Reapers Revenge. Uh, it's a contract somewhere. I have to tell people that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just oh. joking. But they okay. do want us to say that, though. They do want us to call them the official partner hotel of Reaper's Revenge. So we do have a great stay and play package with the Hilton. Come on down. Get your tickets right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now, something I asked you about years ago, but this was like during the pandemic. So it was all like confusing, but the, just happy you made the show for the year for 2020. But do you think you're going to incorporate more smells in the Reapers events this year? Um, I don't know that that's, I don't know, you know, like to me, it, the smell thing for us doesn't work as well. I mean, we're, we don't have a lot of indoor stuff. And when we do, yeah. until we do a, a real haunted house, which we're talking about, um, but I mean, we're a 90 minute show right now. And I mean, uh, I mean, there's some great deals out there right now. Get your tickets while you can, folks. Uh, we've got a $40 off VIP $99 ticket right now. So, I mean, and there's only going to be so many of them preseason. But um, uh, use promo code FALL22. Um, but uh, uh, here's the thing. Um, you know, there's only so much you can do. So, at, like, at what point does the show get too big? Does it cost too much money? I mean, you know, we're doing our best to really uh, uh, price the show appropriately. Like, yeah. we're $69 general admission ticket, $69. However, $10 off coupon right on our website for Friday night, $20 coupon for Sunday night right on our website. So come for $49, which is a dollar cheaper than last year, on Sunday nights, or come for $59 on Friday nights. You know, you're saving 10 bucks on Friday or 20 bucks on Sunday. But what I'm doing is, 
trying to, and this was Paul's brainchild, and you know, I'm just carrying it on, is we're trying to shift that Saturday crowd so that people don't have to wait as long. We shift them to Friday and Sunday. I, I might, uh, you know, I'm, we we're exploring time ticketing for next year. Um, everybody swears by it in the industry. I know we're kind of behind with it. Um, we just, we do a lot of things well up here at Reapers and we're looking at that, but we just don't just, we've got such a decent thing going that, and I don't want to make it sound like we're conceited where we think we're that good. It's just, we, you know, it's a big show. We do well. Certain things work for us. Um, this year, we really tried to expand our parking lot and look at some things to make it easier to help our, uh, our customers come in, enjoy the show. Um, timing, like you said, was huge, but we're trying to do that. I think time ticketing might be the answer to help more, but we need to make sure, and we didn't want to pull it off this year because we had so much other stuff going on. I think next year we might just look at time ticketing and the final scene rebuild. The Hayride got so much stuff this year that you guys are going to love the show. Trust me, it's it's going to be really good. So, <laughs> All righty. Go ahead, Glenn. Ask another question. <laughs> uh, what advice would you give people who want to own their own haunt? Don't do it. Take up basket weaving. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, if you want to own a haunt, unless it's completely business driven, you've already got the bug and you're a haunter. Um, so then obviously that's the dream. Who wouldn't want to do their their passion, their love for a, a living? I mean, I don't ever feel like I'm working when I'm when I'm haunting. I mean, yeah, there's tough days and whatever, but I mean, I wouldn't do it. I mean, don't tell my partners, but I'd do it for free. I would do it for free, but I just don't have to because I've made myself a spot in the haunt industry where I'm good at a couple things and I'm able to earn a living doing it. So, I mean, if you're really into it, just don't ever give up. Make yourself really uh, marketable by knowing more than one trade in the industry. The more you know, the more that you can make yourself a living that you need to be around for the entire year. You know, even though uh, our haunt's seasonal, we do stuff in the winter. We're busy all year long, you know. So that's why I would tell people just live it, love it. You know, if, if you can dream it, uh, make it, you know, you're passionate about it. Just go after it. Don't take no for an answer. You know. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Now, this is another thing I wanted to ask you. Talking about that pumpkin monster. I, I've actually seen pictures of it already on Facebook. Somebody posted on Facebook already. Yeah, yeah, before we put it up. So, yeah, I mean, that's okay. <laughs> you know, you're, nobody's going to know where he's coming from. And when he gets you, you're done for. He's way <laughs> too He's way too big. And this, and then, I mean, you know, Kevin did uh, a really awesome thing for me. Um, he took uh, something, his biggest uh, actor, uh, Matronic, is uh, a huge head called Scaliath. Yes. And Bad Seed actually never had hands, but Scalia mm -hmm. did. And yeah. Scalia's hands are huge. Yeah. So uh, Kevin from Gore um, was able to uh, put Scalia's hands with Bad Seed and kind of did a hybrid of the two together uh, special for us, which uh, was awesome. And that's why I love doing business with them, guys. Uh, we actually got three, three, yeah, count them, three of those this year. Uh, so Pumpkin Hill got one of them. Two other ones are going somewhere else. I can't tell you that that either you know but uh you know that's uh that's some really good stuff from gorgalore which i'm pumped about uh you know i mean we don't do that every year this was just a good year for that um we got some good stuff from scare factory um you know so i mean the guys have been uh been really good those unit 70 got a lot of great stuff from unit 70 that just showed up like within the last couple of weeks poison props uh some great stuff so i mean the list goes on and on <laughs> I mean, we really, you know, sometimes I, I think some people think because we have so many people come through our doors that like we're rich or something as owners. And I mean, we're really good to our employees. Everybody gets a piece and we put a tremendous amount of money back into the show. You know, and I don't think people understand the risk that is involved in a show this size. You know, I mean, you know, so want some people to think about that sometimes before they make comments or, or jump to conclusions about you know how well a haunt can do i mean there's there's so much responsibility in owning a haunt but i wouldn't have it any other way i love it 
But, you know, people need to understand that there's a lot of risk involved. It's like any other business, you know, and you got a lot of employees that are counting on you. You know, we, and we try to really spread the love here. I mean, you know, I mean, I have a couple of businesses. If, if Reapers was so amazing and that's all I did, you know, I wouldn't need to have any of my other businesses, you know? So you know, I do the escape room stuff throughout the year and I sell stuff, you know, supplement my income. So that's something I tell people too, before you jump into this and you think I could just do this full time, but you know, I want to be able to have enough money to support the business if we have to grow, you know, Reapers is, you know, somewhat self-sufficient, but, you know, I mean, as owners, you know, if there's a problem, we have to step up, you know, so you, you, you know, you kind of always want to make sure you're one step ahead of the game. Like we said earlier, giant chess match. <laughs> do you have any final thoughts, Glenn? Are you guys ever going to do more Haunt Life Tonight episodes? <laughs> you know, I think about that every every uh, uh, every so often. I, we we actually filmed one, and this is how bad I am. Um, we actually filmed one at Trans World this year, and um, and we and we did some interviews afterwards. So we did, you know, it just it, it it got it's we're so busy this year. We had so much to do. Um, and I'd really like to have my media team, uh, uh, Thomas, who heads up all the editing, because I, I do editing too, and I just um, I did a lot of new editing for Ring scene this year. I'm very excited about a lot of that. But, I, you know, I really would like to have just Thomas maybe start taking them and, you know, have him spend the time to chop it up and, you know, just kind of pass that off because, you know, during the week I have a lot that goes on when I go back up to New York from Reapers, you know, for my other business. And, you know, I have family stuff that I have to take care of too. To, so, so it kind of gets tough, um, you know, to just do Reaper stuff all the time. That's something I'd like to pass off. And then I'd be happy to do them. <laughs> I would, you know. We would be I don't happy to watch more. Oh, thank you. I don't, I don't know why, but thank you. <laughs> uh, I know Kelly would like to do it. And, you know, uh, Kelly and I, uh, he just got done doing the Wayne County Fair and for, for 10 days, I haven't had him here. I'm so so excited to have my brother back tomorrow. And I went and saw him at the Wayne County Fair, but it's different when we're not working together, you know? I mean, you know, I, I get excited on the days where I'm working with Kelly. I'm like, yo, we're working together today. Let's go tear some shit up in the woods. <laughs> and, and, you know, you just have fun when you're working with your bros, you know? And, I mean, you know, so, you know, on some days, just haunting is awesome. Like literally today I spent, and you guys will see it this year at the, at the VIP lounge where, you know, I, I entertain and, and people come over and, uh, you know, we'll have a, a soda or whatever. And, you know, and, uh, and we talk before the show and, you know, we've got our, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, I just put up a new awning today and uh, I kind of did the, another side of stairs so I can go up in my RV either, either way. And I'm just excited because I'm kind of decorating it. Well, Amber's kind of decorating it. And my girlfriend uh, was decorating it when she was here, but she's busy because her heart opens a week before ours. So we give a shout out to Exit 13 Haunted House. Yes. <laughs> shout out to Rebecca. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. So <laughs> I'm so excited for what you guys are doing. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you having me on the show. It means a lot that you even care about what I'm saying. Because, uh, I'm again, I'm like, why? <laughs> but uh you know uh thank you thank you for caring uh i appreciate all the kind words about the show um there's an amazing family of haunters here that works tirelessly and uh just i, I mean it's amazing what this team does and uh i'm very excited for the show that we're gonna uh we're gonna show everybody for this year in 22 you know so let's hope uh everybody has a wonderful fall get out there see as many haunts as you can and uh come see us here at reapersrevenge.com how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And what what is the first day or opening? What's the first day? Oh wow, you want me to get into all that? No, uh, Friday the 23rd, <laughs> September okay. 23rd. So we have 35 days from today, and that's until our dress rehearsal. We'll be doing a full dress rehearsal for uh Hayride, Lost Carnival, and Delirium on Monday, and then we do uh Pitch Black and Sector on Tuesday, and then Wednesday the 21st. We will do our full dress rehearsal. Then we give everybody a day off to kind of recoup on Thursday. And then we will be open to public on the 23rd. So it's going to be awesome, man. I'm totally, totally pumped. Uh, but feel really great about the show right now. 
me and you know, like I said, I just been running around all day building stuff, and I'm like, I just feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so I have been John from the Haunt Informer, and I'm Glenn from Fall Ritual. This was episode 33 of Fall Informer. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being on, Todd. And definitely check out Reaper's Avenge and test your fate. <laughs>